it's a little thing. Man, they not around here. Yeah. I think it's a little thing. Rockstar. Thing. Greetings, earthlings. This is my introduction. They say greatness doesn't come overnight, so I'm not rushing. Spaced out swag. Best believe I'm paper touching. Super stupid. And we live. Welcome to the mothership, bitches. How you doing? It's another episode of the Who That Podcast, the livest podcast this side of the Mississippi and the Nile River. How y'all doing? As always, it is your boy B. Hey, motherfuckers. <laughs> How y'all? Um, we got the Captain Demario right here to the left of me. Which camera we on? Which camera? Boom! What right up, up here. What up, what up? And then to the right, we have the light skin sincere Sean. What's up with it, y'all? Mr. Devin, how you doing, bro? Oh, living the life, bro. Living the life. Getting ready. Getting ready for a lot of work coming these next few months. Hey, that's a good thing, though. Hey. You don't need no downtime. <laughs> Facts. So, so we have a very special presentation uh, today. Um, thanks to the beauty of, of, of technology. We are able to do video chats like we did uh, last week with uh, Mayor Chaz Motor. Thank you once again, Mayor, for coming on the show. And, yes, thank uh, you very much. And being a part of that. And we are utilizing that same technology uh, once again so we can speak with two members of the Boogaloo Boys. Yeah, well, there's a lot of, uh, I invited them on here because there's a lot of, I think, misconceptions of what's going on with these guys and what they stand for, even myself. I even made a misconception, and that's kind of what brought us to this today. They, you know, I'm, I assumed one thing, and a member was like, "Hold on, that's not what we're about." And I was like, oh, "We're gonna talk about it and see then." And he sent me some literature, and I was like, "All right, if I have this misconception, then a lot of people probably have this misconception." So I invited, uh, I reached out, I invited, they answered. Um, and we're just going to go from there, I think. Well, yeah. Well, we have uh, two members of the Boogaloo Boys from two different uh, states, which is going to be very cool. We have Andrew from South Carolina, and we have Alex from Oklahoma. And they've both been uh, nice enough to grace us with their presence to, to educate us and, um, and, you know, answer a few questions that we have and, and our curiosity. And hopefully through any comments that you guys put in, we can uh Ask those questions that you guys might have, as long as they're not dumb. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Please be respectful to the guests. So. All right. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So thank you guys for coming on. How you doing? Pretty good. Oh, good man. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you here today. Um, go ahead and uh, Andrew introduce your fir yourself first, and then afterwards Alex, you introduce yourself. Yeah. Um. So, name's Andrew, uh, like I said, from South Carolina. Um, recently got into the Liberty Movement probably, you know, six, seven months ago. Uh, uh, up until then, I was a fairly right-wing, um, you know, statist. Like, I, I was actually, um, I actually have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. I was going to be a cop and, and did a almost complete 180. Right, right. <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> wow. All right, but that man. This, this gun yeah. right, Alex, can you tell the people a little bit about yourself? What got you into uh, into the the the, the boogaloo? Uh, so uh, I'm Alex. Uh, I command a, a group down here in Oklahoma, uh, actually in northeastern Oklahoma, and uh, I got into the boogaloo movement kind of by accident. Uh, a friend of mine, he's like, "Hey, man." Have you heard about the Boog? And I was like, the what? He's the Boogaloo, man. I was like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so he showed me you know, a couple of different Facebook groups, and I started you know, finding the memes to make a lot of sense. Uh, so I did some research, and uh, that's when I really got into it. Uh, prior to that, uh, I was part of a patriot group out here in Oklahoma, and so I've been in the liberty movement as people are calling it for uh, quite some time it's been at least five years uh, I'm prior service military so uh, I, I feel that it's my duty to serve my community uh, regardless of if it's you know overseas on a foreign battlefield or helping people here after uh, you know tornadoes or floods or whatever it may be I'm, I'm here right so okay that, that's that's 
what makes us who we are. And, and you said private duty military? No, no, prior service. Oh, prior service. I thought you said prior. I was like, tell me what prior, private duty military. <laughs> tell me about that. Okay, I got you, I got you. <laughs> well, um, like, uh, like Paco said earlier, he kind of got into the whole, the whole back and forth communication because it started with a misconception. And I we do want to clear up some misconceptions, uh, because, but the only thing I've really seen is um, is uh, just headlines. Like I, I haven't read any articles. I didn't want to yeah, have any biased uh, opinions thrown at me or anything like that. But I have seen in the headlines that they um, that the Boogaloo Boys have had a presence during the, these protests around the nation, and uh, and that's that's most that I've read into it. I didn't want to read the details, but uh, do, do the Boogaloo Boys do they? Um, Stand with BLM, or are they part of the protest? Like, but like, how? What is the uh, the correlation between the, the the Boogaloo movement and the the protest going on? Who wants to take this? Andrew, I'll, I'll, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I'll go. Um, so you know, it, at least at least for my part, you know, um, you know, the Liberty Movement, the Boogaloo Boys, we definitely stand with the BLM message, right? Not necessarily. Uh, some of the the leadership from BLM, um, and you know maybe maybe I've got my misconceptions as well about BLM, but you know it seems a lot of the times it's it's almost anti everything except black people with BLM, right? And like I said, maybe maybe that's my misconception. You know, I've definitely met BLM members that were great. You know, um, uh, I was actually at the Columbia protests. Uh, mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago um, and you know I had black people that were like hey man I'm, I'm really glad you're here supporting us and you know it, it was it was a good time you know and so really what the, the boogaloo is though it's just it's anti you know it's anti-corruption anti-police anti-government type things because unfortunately you know the police are the enforcers of the government right and so they're on the front lines that are you know the ones that are violating people's rights, and they're the ones that are, you know, choking yes. people out and killing them and stuff. Yes. And so, uh, it's definitely an inherent thing that we're our some of our viewpoints align together for sure. Okay, okay. Uh, Alex, did you want to jump in on that at all? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually think what he said is pretty accurate, uh, and I would even take the the anti-government portion and and elaborate on it a little if that's all right Go ahead. Uh, it's not it's not that we are anti-establishment anti-government anti-authority altogether it's the system has become so broken that it's time to abolish it and reset right it's not that we are anarchists you know that oh, that man. goes into a whole <laughs> different spectrum of things that it's we're, we're not anarchists there has know. to be some system in place <laughs> We can't sit here and just, you know, run crazy. Uh, that that's uncivilized. Right. We are for removing the corruption, the negative that's there, and replacing it with something that works, something that's positive. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for for the listeners, for <laughs> the ones that um, are wanting, they they also see that that things need a, a reform and a change. That that there's things. And I would I would guess that seeing the protest and seeing things going on, you know, that is an opportunity to be like, look, these people also think they need to be reformed. Even though we we may have different end game objectives and views of all of it, there is a reform that is needed, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. All right. So what's the um the reset, the re, the restructure. What what is the corruption that that brings the Boogaloo Boys together? Like, what 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 are the things in government that you guys see that is wrong that you that has you know cultivated this this alliance of, of like minded people? Uh, that, that's a long list. Man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got time because I really I'm, I'm like I, I want to name a few myself. Like when you say that, it, it took me a few places I wanted to ask, but I just I didn't want to overstep anything. I wanted to just get more clarity on what are the things that may need immediate reform or, or, or reproach. Uh, 
Andrew, you, you want this one or you want me to take yeah, it? Yeah, so, uh, uh, obviously, you know, um, cra- crazy-ass white guys and their guns. You know, <laughs> that's, that's definitely what started it, was the Second, Am- with the Second Amendment. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, I, I think almost every single person in the Liberty Movement thinks that it, literally every single gun law is an infringement on the Second Amendment. You know, uh, shall not be infringed means exactly that. And if the populace is armed where they can defend themselves, right, you're not going to see a whole lot of these, um, you know, police brutality cases and and things like that. Um, You know, you're not going to see the government murdering women and children like they did down in Waco, Texas, you know, um, stuff like that. Uh, You know, that's that's one thing I would absolutely love to see is I would love to see more um, minorities with guns. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I really do. Like, yes! you know, one of my, one of my know, favorite I, images is the Black Panthers storming the California State House. Like, that, that's phenomenal. And guess what? They didn't get shot. You know no. why? Because they would have shot back. Exactly. I got Huey Newton tattooed on my arm. I fuck with this guy right here. Yes, we need to be armed as as a country. That's what set us apart from other countries that are, you know, the big major in the world or whatever. We have an armed populace. Right. Like in the UK, they don't have that. Like there's only so far that it can go when it comes to a civil uh, uprising or, or or civil discourse. You know what I mean? It's, it's a limit on how far they can go. So we really need to take the right that we are one of the very few countries that can arm ourselves and arm the fuck out of ourselves. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And I mean, you know, well, like, well, well, even, even looking at some of these protests, right, you know, the, the areas that were getting, like, tear gassed and, you know, beat with riot shields, those were places where you could not carry firearms. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah, Alex, you said you read an article. Sorry. Uh, you look at the way things that, yeah, uh, you you look at the way things have played out in places like Oklahoma, uh, where you know, even the National Guard was called in because the the mall in Tulsa was uh, under fire, right? Mm. And uh, you notice there was even the the protesters that were causing a scene and smashing in some of the windows, the the rioters. I'm not even going to label them with the protesters; those were rioters. Right. Uh, they they were not getting shot at because here in Oklahoma we passed the constitutional carry bill everybody regardless of, of whether you have a permit or not if you are a law abiding citizen and not a felon you can carry a gun period so nobody knows who's carrying a gun anymore and nobody wants to shoot because nobody wants to get shot at exactly <laughs> right right, right. Exactly. you know and then and then the I, I feel I need to add this too uh-huh. on the opposite end of that you know the the armed aspect of you know with the riders and stuff. You've I've seen videos of store owners that had the right to carry in their store, stopping their businesses from getting burnt down to the ground because they were able to arm themselves. You know, so it's not just against the government; it's against just shithead people in general. Right. You stand for what's right. I think right. a lot of people don't. What is right? Right. So I think a lot of people don't don't realize. Because they wanted to mix the protesters and the rioters and the looters all together as one. And what they have to realize is there was there's people that are opportunists, you know? And you might have these amount of people out here protesting, but an opportunist sees all the police on the other side of those people and sees the electronics store over here. That's, they're going to take that opportunity. So a lot of people really wanted to group all of them as a whole. It was it was there was police on the streets. There was protesters. There was looters. There was rioters. You know, they they were they were all on the same street. They weren't all the same entity. They were even they were agents though. Yeah, there like, was like, there's yeah. people let's, let's pretending sure to be. That that is stated historically, that unequivocally there is video evidence. Finally, like we've heard rumors before about provocateurs and people that just come in in the midst and do things, and it all could you know be conspiracy in conjunction before like no there were agents there that would just show up dressed in all black and and fuck some shit up and then disappear right, right? That, 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 <laughs> those fall under opportunists still. Uh, <laughs> that's still an opportunity to push uh, your agenda very true very true okay so with the uh with the boogaloo movement um alex you say you've been in five years how long has it been 
a um, thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, well, like I said, it, I got into the Boogaloo movement itself probably about a year ago. Mm. Um, prior to that, I was part of a militia, part of a patriot group out here uh, that was fighting for basically the same thing. And so when the Boogaloo movement came along, I was like, hey, guys, check this out. Um, everybody was pretty much on board, and, and we just kind of you know, switched platforms uh, as far as title goes. Right. Ah, okay, okay. So what the, with the Boogaloo boys, what, what party are, are, are y'all with? What, what? Yeah, what are, you, what are you guys saying? Like, if somebody wanted to reference you guys. Yeah, like, what would the, y'all like? That, that's a very hard question, because... There are so many of us, uh, and just like any other group, uh, each individual person is going to have their own perspective. Right. But mm-hmm. I think for for certain groups, I could definitely speak on my group. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, and, and I was, we're, we're pretty much libertarians with some added steps. Yeah, I am also a libertarian, so... Uh, as little government interference as possible, uh, as much personal liberty to include the personal responsibility that comes with it uh, uh, alongside. What does liberty mean to, to you guys? Like, what does that word encompass for you? So, uh, ahead, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, for, for, for me, you know, uh, it's it's basically being able to have the freedom to do what you want to do as long as you are not aggressing against somebody else. Okay. Right? So, okay. you know, you can say what you want to say and you can do what you want to do, right, without government interference, mm-hmm. right, as long as you're not hurting other people, right? And as soon as you start hurting other people, then that's when it goes from, you know, liberty to infringement, right? You right. are infringing on somebody's rights now instead of the government. Yes. Right. Uh, Alex, uh, would you concur? You got you, you got your own. I absolutely agree. Awesome, awesome, awesome. absolutely. Without infringing on other people, I like that. I wanted to make sure that people understood, like uh, when they hear liberty movement and when they hear these things, that they don't put interpretations of their own, you know, mind onto it. That they can get a clear where you guys stand. You know what I mean? Like you have freedom, but as long as you don't hurt anybody else in the in the process of so. With that, if somebody, because there always is that person that's going to hurt other people. So how much government involvement do you guys believe in? Like, to what extent, like, is the line? You know? Is it like Amish? I think no schooling? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I I think that uh, things need to be discussed and agreed upon as a community. Uh, The way that things used to be done. You know, you used to have one schoolhouse for a community. Well, yeah, the community was small, and that's why it thrived. It was because people took care of each other. They looked out for each other. They didn't push things that the entire community didn't vote for. Mm. What was the last time you know you heard of people actually attending town hall meetings? We have these massive city halls for people to go and sit in on these town hall meetings. Nobody does it. Right. You wonder where the corruption comes from starts at the lower levels yeah. and then and people they just, get in uncontested and they keep on marching because nobody's stopping them because people don't care they're apathetic right and then, and then they just so complain afterwards it, exactly it's like oh how did we get here well hey when you had that community meeting did you go when this guy became a city council member or your mayor did you go well now he's a senator or a congressman you know, did you attend any of that? Right, 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 right. That's really how it, how it creeps away from you. Yeah. We, we, you know, so uh, for me, I would love to see where voting in an election would not matter one bit. Right? Where the government has so little power that your daily life is not affected by whoever's in charge. Right? right. To me, that's the absolute in game of liberty right? right is that the government has almost no control of your life right they are there strictly to make sure that others are not infringing on your liberties right, right? right. but you know also you should be your own protector that type right. of thing but you know it, it's I, I would absolutely love to see where 
it would not matter if, you know, Donald Trump got voted in or Joe Biden got voted in because both of them are just like it, like the, the candidates party, not necessarily both of them and PS people, right. but are just so useless. The position itself right. is just so useless. It doesn't mean anything. anymore. Nice, nice. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, it makes sense to me uh, to where they're only there to do the function of the office. The other, the, if anything okay. else that, 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 because right now a lot of things are very foggy. Like things can really be held up when it comes to progress because congressman from Kentucky from has been representing bumfuck district of you know whatever for the last thirty seven years doesn't want doesn't want to vote this way. But right. but from but from that mindset it's like regardless of what that guy thinks over there, fuck him, he can't impede on, on the things that we actually want to do in our day to day lives. Right. I like that. That's pretty that's, nice. That's like, if we are going to maintain a, a House of Representatives and a Senate, right, and maintain Congress as it is, mm-hmm. we need to set term limits. For set sure. The term, term limits, set definitely. Term limits. I mean, so we don't have real. career politicians continuing to push their personal agendas and running away with it. Right. So, so in the in the boogaloo thought, uh, well, ideology or thought process or belief system or whatever, uh, how how effective is the whole voting working system from the inside strategy? Is that something that you guys think is a is a main proponent of like fighting for reform or do you think it's a, a little bit past that point? So right right now I would say no. Um, <laughs> and and really and really what the, the biggest reason is because of education. Right? You know, you go in schools these days and Everything is, you know, has a has a spin on it, right? There's no actual knowledge anymore. It's basically politics light in school. All right. A, a lot, lot of choices right? also. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. right? And so it's, you know, kids are growing up and, you know, they're they're basically being conditioned to think one way or the other, right? And then you have the system, like the two-party system right now, mm-hmm. um, which... You know, I, I guess technically I would be more of a um, really, really more of like an uh, a ANCAP, a- a- anarcho-capitalist, right? Okay. But this year I'm voting Joe Jorgensen, libertarian, right? And I, it, I am absolutely appalled at the amount of people that are just, oh no, man, you, you, you can't vote for her because that's a vote for Biden or that's a vote for Trump, like. My acid is it's a vote for Joe Jorgensen, right? Right, Joe but it's Jorgensen. it's now become this system of we're not voting for the person that is best suited to lead this country. We're voting against the other guy, right? And I don't see that. I don't see that changing anytime soon. I really don't. And the guys that we're voting for, I think everyone's just kind of like face palm, like this is really what we're doing right now. You know, out of I see the memes where it says, you know, out of X amount of people in the United States, these are the two guys. Like, really? I don't know. Exactly. It it doesn't make sense to me. And and that's why, like, the reason why I asked that question uh, about, you know, voting and and if it plays a part in changing the system from the inside is because I'm of the stance that it doesn't matter. I've never voted. Like, I'm, I'm, I believe that they're selected behind closed doors. That's my thing. And, and I just I just believe that it's with the boogaloo and like what the boogaloo represents. How how realistic do you think it is that that it's a possibility that we have this this thing that ignites the whole country into a, into a place where voting is not is it, you know is not making the change that that they're telling us it's gonna make or the, what we can do and when things have to get to a point of more. Uh, Direct um, aggressive change. There we go. Aggressive change. Right. Come and, on. And I want to. I want to add right behind him too. Also, I mean, do you think deconstructing the electoral college would change things mm. at all? Also. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, Andrew, I'll take this one if you don't mind. Go for it. Okay. So, uh, I was actually just discussing with a friend of mine. I'm not going to name him. Uh, who's looking at running for political office, and he and I have been bouncing some ideas back and forth off of each other. Okay. As far as the 
deconstructing the Electoral College, we came up with a system for third-party ranked voting. Okay. And it's, it's very interesting. There's a lot of information on it. Uh, if, if you do a Google search, it's not a new concept, uh, but it's something that makes sense and would work now. Uh, where someone like Joe Jorgensen would have an actual valid shot at a presidency. Right. Because it's not based off of the, the way the Electoral College is set up now. There would be a reform to it. Uh, so that's that's something I would recommend looking into. It's pretty interesting. It's really a long explanation for it, so I'm going to cut that short. Right. But, uh, you said I should the other it. thing. Sorry to interrupt you, but Google third party ranked voting. Right. All right, just wanted to make sure I typed in the right thing, but please continue. Uh, the other thing is, I feel that yes, we are at a crucial time where our country can be ignited by a single event. Uh, I mean, how many people of color have died before you know this one incident, George Floyd? Mm-hmm. And it ignited our entire nation. Right. Right. In a matter of four days, there was protests in every major city across the country. Yes. Yes. So, if we're already there, and now there's extra division being pumped in by mainstream media, like how quickly are we going to reach? Yeah. How quickly are we going to reach that razor's edge and, and tip over? Mm. I think we're pretty close. I, I would have to agree with you. I would have to agree. Uh, but it's a very fine line between um, disruption and, and, and full blown out, you know, uh, where we have to take them on head, head to head. And I, we had this discussion. We had uh, some business owners and pastors and NAACP members and presidents on uh, all, all they wants to have a group discussion. One of the things that we said was, uh, we don't have the the sheer firepower to to just lose our cool and and go you know bonkers up against the government and and I, I and like we were we were speaking from just the black side of things when it comes to minorities and the numbers in, in America, mm-hmm. but also with the uh, Boogaloo boys, if we reach that moment of critical mass, of, you know where where things go over. Numbers wise, like like, is it is is it if it comes to that moment, are you guys like from Oklahoma to South Carolina? Is it actually organized enough to where it wouldn't just be massive fallout? Because with the BLM movement, my thing is, I, uh, when Andrew said, you know, some of the leadership, I don't even know who the leadership is in, in Black Lives Matter. I didn't know there right. was. And I, <laughs> like, look, I really feel like Black Lives Matter. <laughs> It's more. It's, it's a statement more than even though they yeah. do have a group, but I feel like what it represents is more than the entity. Of yeah, what it the is. entity. Like yes. I, Black My, Black Lives Matter didn't put together all these protests. These protests happen from upset American people. You know, like even though the term Black Lives Matters f- forecasted above all these things, it was it was the term and the statement, not the group. Right. You right. Know what I mean? right. Right. Yeah. That's that. That's that's what I was trying to say earlier. Yeah, I, I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah. So so with saying that it's it's a disorganized uh, it's, it's dysfunction because it is just independent people putting things together. Now with the Boogaloo Boys, would it be a situation of like, yeah, we're doing this in Oklahoma. I don't know what they're doing in South Carolina, but hopefully all things merge together and we win this thing. You know what I mean? Because it seems like it would be. Yeah. What is insane. the structure? Is he's at? What is the structure yes. of the Boogaloo Boys? So uh, I can't speak on that for other states. In Oklahoma, we have our groups, and we actually have a coalition where all of the leaders get together in the state. We we discuss things. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Uh, so if it actually, you know, if something were to actually happen, at first look, yeah, it looks like we're scattered. But on closer inspection, there's there's a lot more of us here that are a lot more organized and in command of things than most people would, would realize. Mm. 
Mm. And you guys have kept under the radar pretty good. I was, I was like, when it popped up, I was like, hold on just a minute. Who are these guys? But um, Andrew, go ahead and uh, and and touch on that last about your where you're at. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you know, it, it's it is definitely a disorganized movement in a is a whole, right? There are definitely pockets. Here and there, that are you know highly organized, you know, mm-hmm. um, good training and things like that. Um, but again, the you know the biggest issue with doing that, as soon as you start, you know, making that actual like organizational structure, right? Mm-hmm. Then you kind of start getting into that territory of like, okay, well now the government actually has people that they can go out and label terrorists, and then. Right. enact the Patriot Act to basically throw them in a black hole and, you know, throw away the key, right? Uh, and so th- there's definitely small pockets of, you know, highly trained stuff, but the the biggest thing, too, is, you know, especially on the internet, um, you know, like all these boo groups on the on Facebook, you know, I, I probably 60% of them are just shit posters and LARPers. Uh, keyboard right? warriors. They're, they're, yeah, they're keyboard warriors. Right, they're not. They're not going to do anything. Tired of those um, people. <laughs> you know, they are. They are there for the memes, right? right. Um, uh. You know, and then you've got another. I would say probably five to ten percent, uh, maybe even a little less than that, that don't actually understand what the liberty movement is about. Right. You know, and that's those jackasses that CNN picks up, and you know, the far right wingers and the the white supremacists and those general fuckheads, right? right? <laughs> so, um, can I let me jump in real quick? Yeah, right, yeah, please. Just quick, quick question for you, Antifa. Are they terrorists or are they being pushed oh, for God, scapegoats either. right now? Oh, okay, we on this route already. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> I, I've I've got really mixed feelings about Antifa. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. It's, I I I like that they are supposedly anti-fascists. Right. Okay. When Antifa started, I think it was a good thing. Right. Right. And unfortunately, like a lot of movements, it has gotten twisted, right? And now it has become a just, you know, hypocritical, uh, bastardized version of what it was originally trying to do, you know? So, um, is is that... And I'm just... I'm from the outside looking in with it. Sure. Because I'm like, okay, is it is it the media spin? Is this... The media spin and it, it, are these people that are using that name because they're the bad guy this week you know what I mean or are, is it really twisted is you know do we know you, you know what I'm saying like so you know and, and again there's there's so many things out there that I I honestly don't know what to what to think about Antifa right, right. Um, I was also at the, the VA rally um, in Virginia uh, last year uh, and there were some guys that said that they were Antifa and they were pretty cool. Like, you know, I, I actually right. talked to them for a little while and we agreed on a lot of the same things. Right. Um, I would say though that from from reading some of the stuff that I've seen on like social media, that most Antifa members, I would say, are, you know, communists. Right. And mm. I I hate communism. <laughs> <laughs> He's an, I hate right. communism. <laughs> Okay. Right, and so I, I would say that you know while, they, while some of their viewpoints might line up, right, it's that end goal, and it's that's completely different from you know what we're trying to accomplish. I understand. Okay. What do y'all think about the uh, the the seven blocks that that they have sequestered? Oh, in uh, in Seattle. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think about that? I just found out about that too. Did you know about that? Yeah, I didn't know about that. Man, what do y'all think about the the their uh, autonomous zone? What is that like? Is that a good strategic thing? Like, is that something like the, the, when you saw it, we like we should have done that. We should have got our own little block. We should have took out some territory. <laughs> uh, I think that it is a perfect example of why communism doesn't work. Oh yeah. Oh shit. There's <laughs> they have because I've been I've been keeping a pretty close co- close eye on the situation. Uh, I've actually got a friend of mine that's stationed up in Washington, and I, I check on him regularly. Uh, All right. They, in this area, they set up these stages 
they have this, you know, no cop co op where, you know, the food is free and all this stuff, right? Right. Within two days, they were out of food and they were asking people to donate food. They were asking people to donate tents, asking people to donate umbrellas. And I'm thinking to myself, why didn't you have that stuff when you took a location? Right, yeah. Action without a plan? Yeah. Action without a plan. And, you know, okay, everybody's sharing everything, you know, because you know it's anti-capitalism too. Is there's they've got some stuff that's out there for that, uh, and so nobody wants to actually spend anything to get any of those supplies. So they do, they just sit there and they're like, oh hey, I'll share with you and you can share with me, and at the end of the day, everything's gone. Yeah, they don't have because there's no control. Whoa. And then they're like, oh, please help us because we didn't think. Yeah. Well, communism doesn't work. That's a perfect example of why. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Did we get anything to add down there? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, I mean, what's next for you guys? Which, where, where is the movement headed? Where are we? Wait, wait. Oh, wait, what you got? Go next, wait. wait okay. I got more questions. All right. All right so, go ahead. Go ahead. So with because you brought up Antifa, so I'm like I have like I have read the articles on them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, where do you guys uh, where do you guys stand with with Antifa's whole approach? Like in the media, what I've seen is they're they're the ones that like the writers or like they're the ones that you know are the the. the people that want to fight first when it comes to the protests and all that, but I've seen Boogaloo boys out there too. If there's Antifa like causing a ruckus or something like that and there's Boogaloo boys out there, uh, does that does that butt heads? Like, you know what I mean? Is like, that like the Bloods and the Crips? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. But let me ask you this question though. What have you seen them out there doing? Uh, I just all I've only seen the photos that they put with the articles, man. Like, I, you know, they try to portray Antifa as the the terrorists of the day, and they are the ones burning up this and that and all that. So I I really don't know about what they do. Be honest, man. Anything that includes uh, white people being as mad at the police as we are, I'm I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you can like help me out here. Like, I what, like, understand what what do you see the boot boy out there doing? Oh, y'all just be standing there. Like, y'all, just, yeah, y'all just got your yeah. rifles on your chest with your Hawaiian shirts. And yeah, <laughs> that's what we <laughs> saw. See, I didn't know a lot about it. Like, when I when I first saw the article... I keep up on, on a lot of these Facebook pages where there's people actively doing things. The ones that are just there for the memes, I kind of stay off of. I don't have time to get into a debate with somebody over whether or not, you know, I, I they want to call me a FUD because I like a 1911. Okay? Right, right. So... Uh, I get into groups and he's laughing because he knows I'm right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't have time for that. But groups where people are actively doing things, you'll see on most stuff, be like, hey, we're taking medical supplies out and we're helping patch people up. Mm. Or hey, we're taking bottles of water out and we're, we're giving water to both sides. Right. Mm. Because they're yeah. trying to be active in their community and they're trying to help. Okay. Whatever the okay. situation may be, they want what's best for the American people. But it doesn't matter, you know, what side you're on. There's going to end up being, you know, bloodshed on one side or the other, and we're there to help. You know, if we can come in and, and you know, one day we may patch up a BLM member, and the next day we patch up an Antifa member, and the next day we patch up a cop. You know why? Because they're all human beings, and they're all our people. It doesn't matter color of skin, doesn't matter what association you're with. And we understand that as a whole. And we want to stand, like I said, for what is right. Okay. Okay. So, and so I, I'll, 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 if, if I can add some more to that. Please. Go yeah. ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, it, like one of the big things that, that's, like, it, it's funny in a meme, right? But, like, the actual, you know, civil war part of it and you know you know doing that where you're actually shooting it out with the government like I don't think anybody that has actually been in you know in combat or you know has actually fired a shot at another human being in anger actually wants that 
Right. Right. You know, and I think well, that most most of the, the the Boogaloo boys that are actually about liberty, you know, they don't want violence. Right. Like I I, I don't. I, I I hope I never have to shoot <coughs> or at anybody ever again. Right. But right. I am prepared to, and that's that's kind of the thing. Right. And so when you go to these protests and stuff, the reason you don't see actual you know, Boogaloo boys starting riots and, and stuff like that is because we want to be peaceful, right? We don't want to be violent, right? Mm. And we're hoping that we can show people, like, hey, man, this is not the way to do it. Like, you know, you don't have to, you know, put your neck, your knee on somebody's neck for eight minutes, you know, to, to get them in a police car. Like, that's just asinine. Right, right, you know? right. Right. All right, so, so... That's where the difference is, like, from what I've read about Antifa and, like, what I'm hearing from you guys right. to where Antifa is more of a, uh, a agent. They're almost of, like a bad dog. Yeah, yeah. Like they're an agent of, like, just, like, going at it. All right, because and I've only seen photos, you know, with the uh, Blue Blue Boys just, like, standing there. They don't have any any pictures of you guys throwing Molotovs or anything like that. So, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um... How does one become a Boogaloo boy? Like, is there like an application? Or I just need a wine shirt and an AR? Like, what I, you know, like, how do you, <laughs> you, 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 you need a wine shirt, AR, night vision? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know, honestly, it's for me, I, I donawn the whole wine shirt because of what it stands for. And, and that's, that's actually something I wanted to talk about. You know, Please. I asked somebody the other day if, if they understood why the Hawaiian shirt was a thing. And they were like, no, man, I don't get it. You know, what, what's the purpose? And how it was best explained to me, uh, and this is actually by a Vietnam vet who calls himself a boot boy, believe it or not. Uh, and he's a pretty cool dude. He said, look, the Hawaiian shirts remind us of a better time and a better place. Oh, When you, you're on vacation and, you, you know, if you take a vacation to Hawaii, Enjoying your time there, you're free. Mm. Mm. You're at peace. I like that. So this is something that we are striving for, and so we wear it because we remember a better time, and we want to push forward to another better time through the dark. I like that. Yeah, yeah me too. too. I fuck that. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you one thing. People they hear the term civil war and they don't understand. They think it's and I think that's what had caught my attention first too. They were they were, you know, in civil war and automatically my mind went to this racial issue. Explain to them what you guys mean by civil war. You take that or you want me to? Yeah, it doesn't sound racial at all. Well, it's to us uh -huh. because we're kinda of educated I mean, in the in the term, but to the to onlookers, when they see Civil War, they're thinking of Lincoln and freeing slaves and all this stuff, and that's not the literal term. So you take it, guys. Go ahead. So, so I, I was going to say, I mean, I, now that you say that, I could definitely see how people would think that because you know, American Civil War, you know, that's that's kind of what it was. That slavery time, and you know, North versus South, and mm -hmm, right you know, right. stuff like that. Um, but you know, you look at some of the other countries that have had civil wars and it's about you know trying to get rid of a, a, a tyrannical government right you know the right. the first civil war that we fought in America was the revolutionary war right you know uh, against Britain and, and dirty old King George and his outrageous taxes that we have even more of today but don't get me started on that right no, now that's another um, episode <laughs> I should not be a thing right? uh, it, no it shouldn't it should not right? You know, but, uh, like, uh, a lot of the times, you know, when they say s Civil War, it's, you know, it's 70, 70, 1776 Part 2, right, is getting away from that tyrannical government, right? And that that's the Civil, you know, I, I got the 1776 hat on. Uh, that's what we're talking about more than, you know, Lincoln and the slaves and the right. Confederates and all that. Right. Yeah, that's, they're not they're not considered you know, they're not under the Confederacy or anyone that used the term civil war. Me being in business the way I am, I think y'all should rebrand that term, but <laughs> it's out of confusion. Like I do PR for y'all if y'all need me to give me a call. Well I mean, you know, like it, it's 
But when we got invited to come and do this, I was ecstatic because we're actually having a chance to talk about who and what we really are and what we stand for. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wanted to share my platform, or our platform, not my platform, our platform with you guys to kind of clear the air a little bit. But go ahead, go ahead with what you were saying. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, um, the, you know, it, it's like with the Columbia protest, like last week, um, as soon as, uh, you know, some of the, the guys in Hawaiian shirts got there, um, the, the, the black speakers were like, oh, you know, we, we got KKK in the audience, right? And we were all looking around like, oh, man, where are those jokers at? Like, we're just going to the face <laughs> talking about us. Like, wait a minute. You know, and so it's it's stuff like that that, you know, and that's, again, that's why I'm really glad that y'all invited us on so that we can, you know, say that, look, if somebody says they're a boogaloo boy and they're a white supremacist, they're not a boogaloo boy and they that's deserve fine. the same thing that you know these tyrannical government officials need. What? What? Are last, s- last time I checked, I'm white. So right. too. Yeah. <laughs> what are the signs of a tyrannical government? What are the the, the symptoms of a, to when you're under tyranny? Low well, erosion of personal rights. All right. How close are we? It'll start to... slow. It's, it's a long con. No. I was trying to tell somebody that earlier today. It's it's a long con. So they'll start with little things, uh, you know, things that to the, the person who's not paying attention will seem like, oh, yeah, that, that seems like a good idea. You know, that'll keep us safe. Okay, well, then the next thing comes along, oh, we're going to keep you safe with this one, too, yep. by taking this away from you. Yep, 1984 right. type shit. Exactly. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. By the time it's all been done, you, you look back, you're like, oh, hell, what happened? And it started with those little things. Right, and, and that's and that's that's what's happening to America right now. It's not, you know, one big thing that, you know, the government's just like, okay, like, you're all cattle now, like, go get in your pen. It's been death by a thousand cuts, you know? Mm. And it's, sometimes mm. it's a really hard hill to die on, you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, take take COVID for example. Yes. Right. I'm you know, everybody's like, "Oh man, you know, we gotta we gotta stay inside and government mandated, and you 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 gotta wear a mask when you go out, and you know, social distancing." But the pro and there's nothing wrong with that on its face, right? Like I, I'm I'm a fairly uh, anti-social person anyway, so I tried not to get closer than six feet to people right. beforehand, anyways, right? <laughs> but the fact that the government is now mandating it. Right, yes. and now that is an arrestable offense. Yes. Right, that's that death by a thousand cuts, mm-hmm. and you know people are like, oh well, it's done in the name of, of safety. Like you know, people are going to get sick and they're dying. Well, you know, it, it like George, uh, um, like Thomas Jefferson said, right? You know, Pete, I would rather live in dangerous freedom than peaceful slavery. Right, right. freedom exactly. is a dangerous thing. Like you are not going to have a hundred percent security all day every day when you are actually free. Right. right, 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 right. You still have to deal with the food chain, right? Right. Um, let's say that vaccines become mandated, because that's that's definitely one of the things they've been tossing around. What does what does that mean as uh as I, man? I'm with hey, look, I'm with both of y'all. Like that's <laughs> that's, 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 that's when. I'm not saying that's when the boogaloo happens for you guys. But that's when it happens for me. <laughs> but like what 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 does what that signify to uh um you know you guys or or what do you think it would signify to the masses of people like I'm trying to figure out what is the breaking point like what is the uh, the point uh, of I think that, that would be one of the biggest ones because it would be as simple as yeah even somebody that doesn't understand exactly what's going on that's following uh, it that would not be hard to take the veil off of their eyes. They're like, right. hey, guess what? Your government says put this chemical in your body or you can't buy food. Right. Right. Do you, do you think that would be enough of a catalyst? I think I, it would wake up enough people. Andrew, you said no? Why, why, what do you think? I, I really I really don't. I think until because again, it, it's just it's absolutely mind blowing you know, especially during this COVID crisis of how many people, you know, they're begging the government to take away their rights in the name of safety. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it, and, and really, I don't think that breaking point is going to get there until, you know, Joe on the corner can't, you know, d- do go about his daily life and, you know, get his Cheetos and watch his Netflix. Right. Mm. Right. That's that's when it's going to be the breaking point. Do you well, think... I mean, you oh, sorry, Alex. Philadelphia recently? Say that again. The streets of Philadelphia. The, the streets of Philadelphia. I was actually just watching a video last night. Yeah. Uh, they're they're line police and, and national guard. I would say probably every eighth of a mile down the down the road. They got checkpoints. See, in that type of stuff, like I'm one of those people that I, I watch movies and I took them seriously. I don't know if my mom just just let me watch shit way too early or what like don't let your kids watch too many adult movies it fucks with the head but like I, I believed all that shit for real do do you think that people don't really love freedom or appreciate what liberty really is supposed to be and they'll just adjust and just keep going on with it until it's a, a real deal 1984 like do you feel like the last of a dying I really breed? think it's the that they are gonna have to see a country that is not free. It is it's already gonna have to go too far and then have to work his way back to fix pretty much. Like yeah. Yeah. Huh. See so you have to think. A lot of people so like true. like like even Devin, or oh, he's twenty one, they don't they don't know any different. This is their everyday life. You know, and that's that's the future of America. If they don't know any different, if they're just like, oh, you know, text messaging is normal. It's weird for people to talk on the phone. But anybody 30 plus is like, mm, we didn't used to always text message. You know, a little example like that. You're right. You know, that's their everyday life. That's what they know. Wow. So that's yeah. why it's a slow con because they can uh, deceive the, those that just like, oh, this is how it's always been. No, it was different like 20 years ago. <laughs> that type of shit. Well, I mean, you know that that that's the like the the term the new normal with all this COVID BS, yeah. like the new normal. Uh, I, I, this is not my normal. I, I I don't care what you say. Like <laughs> the okay. new normal, like and they they really are like pushing that new normal type of uh, agenda. Um, do you think there's well, because any... the base people and complicit? Yes, 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 yes. And quickly too. It's, it's crazy how fast they. This is their new normal. Then they can sit there and change a little bit here, a little bit there, and keep mm-hmm. making these changes. Oh, but this is your new normal, and you will accept it because it's what you know. Because you have now adapted this to your being normal, rather than you sitting back and saying, "Hey, that's different than this was. Right. That's not normal. This right here, this was normal. That mm-hmm. is something wrong." Right. Right, right. I, I, and I agree with both of you. I think that uh, I think if there were mandated vaccines, that that would be a catalyst to wake certain people up, uh, and 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 in large droves. But I don't know if it would be enough to spark a true um, tear down, rebuild type of mindset for for people. You know what I mean? Uh, do you think? Do you see it getting getting worse? Um, when it comes to government and citizen relations, like, or do you see? But yes. you or you don't think the protests will have any like actual effect in a in a make forcing the the politicians and stuff to start withdrawing their uh, like oppressive orders and or whatever. I I, I mean maybe. I got a preloaded answer. I'm gonna let Andrew go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, m- uh, maybe right. That's you know. Um, we're already seeing some of the police departments and, and things like that uh, make some changes. Um, you know, you had the, the guy in, I, I want to say it was Atlanta uh, just a couple days ago that that just got murdered by the police. And as soon as that happened, the police chief was like, nope, I'm not dealing with that. Stepping down. Yep. Yeah. Done. You know? Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's stuff like that. And you can see some small changes, you know, here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is definitely the longest like protest and, and outrage that this country has seen in a while, yeah. um, you know, for stuff like this. And so I, I hopefully I, I really do. I, I hope that some of the stuff changes, you know, um, I, I, I hope that, you know, they start taking away stuff like qualified immunity uh, from police officers. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, but again, until until I see some actual legislation like Come that, on, I'm now. that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> like, yeah, no way to guarantee legislation though, and that's the thing that sucks. You know, we want to take and move our country forward, but we can't because everyone was talking about, oh, let's drain the swamp. Well, guess what? The swamp's still sitting there. And it's still full of gators. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very true. Yes. Yeah, that's what, what, one of the things I, I always love telling people is, you know, they're oh, le- the the left wing's best for the country. The right wing's best for the country. No, jackass, this is the same damn bird. Yeah. Like they, they yeah. both suck. Wings to fly. Dude, it, come on. Yeah, that's I true. Like these guys. Very true. Yeah, like okay. these guests right yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to point out. I want to point out something. I have never met or spoken with Andrew, and he has never met or spoken with me ever. We're from two completely different states, but we have the same mindset. Uh, I see. Yeah. I see. I'm mm-hmm. in. I'm in Tennessee, and I'm agreeing with both of you. I like this <laughs> shit. Should have been known about this. What yeah. the hell? Yeah. The branding gonna come on the show tomorrow with his Hawaiian shirt, with a Hawaiian <laughs> shirt, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> and a 1776 hat. Yeah, like, man, it's I, time. I, I got one I'll send you. <laughs> That's funny. I'm like, you know what? I think I find some people that understand. <laughs> I think I understand. Yeah. So, where would be a good place for our listeners to educate themselves or, or reach out to your organizations or something like that? You know. Ah. Uh, <laughs> find somebody in your community that speaks halfway decently. That is probably wearing combat boots <laughs> and is actually doing something to help people in their community. That's probably the best place to start. Right. Mm. So you guys don't have like an uh, official website or anything like that or a group page. Well, to... I love that. I mean, you know, like, like said, there's I love that. All over the place. sorry, we keep talking over each other. You know, th- there's definitely pages on Facebook, you know, um, uh, that that haven't gotten zucked yet, you know. Uh, that that happens quite frequently. But again, like I said, most of those people that are online, they're, you know, all they all they want to do is just run their mouth. They're keyboard warriors, right? right? And so next time there's a protest in your town, go find the 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 guys with the body armor and the uh, you know Hawaiian shirts on, and go talk to them and be like, hey man, I I I, I want to be up with you. Right. Right. Okay. That's 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 how to get in with the real guys versus the the you know yeah. the, the posers. Right. Yeah, I understand. I understand. So, putting putting these organizations together or your group, however you guys label yourselves, I mean, kind of tell me about that process a little bit. You know, because we are locally trying to change our community, and you know we're we're gonna put the organization together, but. Kind of tell us your experience with it. I, I, Andrew, you go first, and then Alex, you know, second. Yeah. Um, so, r- really, you know, how, how I started, like I said, it was, um, uh, you know, like I said, I, I was in, uh, uh, got my bachelor's degree in criminal justice. I was about two, week, two weeks away from going to the police academy. And uh, actually, one of my instructors explained to me what a, uh, P.O.P. ticket is a uh, pissing off the police ticket, mm. and it's just something that they do to ruin your day. They know it's not going to stick. They know it's you're not actually going to be out any money or, or you know jail time or whatever. But they just want to ruin your day because you pissed them off, right? Right. Uh, and that was kind of I started I started looking into some stuff some more, and I was like, man, you know that is the exact opposite of what I swore an oath to protect when I joined the Marine Corps. Right. Um, I was like, man, I, I, I can't be a part of that organization. Um, and so then, you know, it kind of uh, evolved into, you know, me talking to some of my close friends and, you know, being like, hey, man, like, government kind of sucks, doesn't it? And they're like, yeah, government does kind of suck. Uh, and then, you know, then when the Boogaloo bit came about we're like oh man let's go on this facebook page and you know do this and do that and you know you kind of start networking with a few other people that um you know after about three months of talking to people you can kind of figure out who's who's serious and who's not who's down um (laughs) i and man i'm i'm telling you like i i've hooked up with people that i was like man okay this guy's legit 
and then you meet up with them and you know it's some fat nerd that's been living in his mom's basement for the last 30 years <laughs> and doesn't have a clue what's actually going on right you know um and so really that's the biggest thing is it's it started with like three three of my friends you know and we were like hey man we're the you know the boogaloo boys in south carolina and let's try and find some more people to, to work with you know and uh now i'm you know i semi-decent sized group now you know, and so that's that's just how it started. Was you know, hey, let's try and go find some people. Met some guys at the Virginia rally. Um, you know, met some dudes that that. So I actually I saw a guy walking down the shirt with Hawaiian or walking down the street with a Hawaiian shirt, and I was like, hey man, what's going on? Like, started talking and and figured out you know he was actually part of the movement too, and so now I'm friends with that guy. Right. You know, right. All right. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, Alex, very grassroots. Yeah, uh, I mean, really, that's how it started for us. Uh, was I mean, even when we started our, our first group back you know, a couple of years ago, uh, it wasn't even this huge thing. It was like, hey, I want to make sure that you know my family's protected. Right. So let's train a little bit. Let's learn some survival skills, and that evolved to, hey, let's learn some search and rescue. Uh, to you know all different kinds of things that we do, and we. Uh, we just, it started really with me and my brother uh, that I deployed with. He, uh, he and I, we ended up, you know, helping people out from some tornadoes that happened out here. Uh, some of the flooding, we went and helped out. And mm -hmm. it just developed from there. And it's like, hey, if we can do this, you know, let's see if we can get some other people to come along and maybe we can help some more people. Right. And it grew. And so it was our families. Um, and then we added some more family. And then a lot of our friends joined in and it, it grew. Uh, and now we've got people that we know in multiple different cities uh, that, you know, all are serving their community in some aspect. Well, so the serving the community, is that like just your chapter? Or is that something that the Boogaloo boys like just in general do? You know, if you see them out there, that they're there like to help. They're, they're there at pretty much as... Uh, 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 I don't want to say peacekeepers because it's too much connotation. Yeah, or that, public like, servants. Yeah, yeah, public servants. Yeah. <laughs> was that um, just like in Oklahoma? I, I you... can speak to my group. Yeah. My my personal group about uh, you know as that. Um, I can't speak to the entire movement as a whole because I don't know everybody. Right. Right. Uh, but I I have seen far more people doing that and being active and in, in aiding in one way or another uh, and being there as that safety net that, you know, uh, I hate using this term, but we are that fine line. You know, we will stand between, you know, the, the rioters and the cops. Like we, we are that dead center that we will protect human life because we don't want the violence. Mm -hmm. But if it comes, we're ready. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're, we're, we're that line, and it's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from using that thin blue line reference because I hate it. <laughs> right, but, right, right. I got you. But really, we're, we are that fine line, that, that boundary in between the chaos and what's right. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, and that's, that's – that, I, I would say that most of the, the people that are actually Boogaloo Boys, that's their mindset. You know, it's – Hey, we're here to make sure that you know people are not getting you know s screwed over and you know fucked up, right? Like right. that's that's what my group was there at the Columbia protest for, and unfortunately, um, one of our I, I, I I'm not even gonna call him a member because I don't actually think that he was Boogaloo boy. I think that he was a I think he was a plant. I really do now. Um, but he got arrested for inciting the riot. He was the first one to start throwing water bottles. And that's not what we're about. Like that's starting the violence. We're not. We don't want to start anything. Like we right. don't want the violence. You know. But we're there to stop it if it comes to us. Right. right. So, let me ask you. I know you. You guys have both mentioned about training and, and stuff like that. For the American people, for listeners, what would you? What training would you suggest to to people? Like, what would you say? Hey. If this is something you want to do, you you should probably do this, this, and this. Learn some medical. Yeah, 
Anybody can inflict a bullet hole, but it takes a special kind of person to patch one. Mm. So where would they where would they get this information? Like how YouTube. Would they get the, don't YouTube Sorry. how to pull a bullet. Uh, don't listen to Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I, I tell you what, there's there's a really awesome thing. Um I used it while I was in the military. I've also used it since I've been out to uh teach some stuff that I know. Um the army has a combat lifesaver course. Mm-hmm. And if you get on this website called SlideShare, there is actually a whole slideshow presentation with step-by-step instructions on everything that they teach in the class and it's free oh wonderful combat That's... what course combat lifesaver lifesaver course i'm i, I, I love He's taking, taking notes <laughs> I, that's what I do that all the time i like just looking stuff up i'll be up 3 30 in the morning like what is combat lifesaver course i'm almost step three or <laughs> <laughs> has something Say what? I'm sorry. Andrew, I think the Marine Corps has something similar, correct? Yeah, uh, so there, well, I, like I said, I was a Marine Corps infantry, so I was able to take two levels of medical training. The first one is Combat Lifesaver, mm. right? And then I was able to take DMOC, which is Deployment Medical Operator course. Uh, and that's kind of the, like, hardcore one. We actually got to work with live tissue. It was, it was really good. Oh, wow. That's impressive. So, yeah. okay. um, Other... but you know, to, okay. to, to, to kind of, um, expand on that a little bit, you know, again, medical training that, that is like, everybody should know how to stop bleeding. Right. right. You know, you, um, the, uh, the Las Vegas shooting, right. Yeah. The reason that there were so, so little deaths with so many people were actually injured, right. Is because there were people in the crowd that were able to apply pressure and tourniquets and, you know, they were able to stop the bleeding and allow emergency services to come in there and actually get them to a higher level of care. Mm-hmm. But they were able to provide that first aid, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go to places like the um, the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando yes. where, unfortunately, nobody knew life-saving stuff and a lot more people died, right? right? Because right. nobody there knew how to stop bleeding, right? Right. Wow. Um, so, it, in, like I said, as, as far as going on, you can go to that CLS course. Uh, I know that there's a couple companies that they teach a course called Stop the Bleed. That is a phenomenal, yep. phenomenal training course. Um, you know, and you could probably just Google that and, and find an instructor in your area. Um, most of your local gun shops are probably plugged into somebody that knows medical training, right. things like that. Um, and then, obviously, you know, I... Again, uh, arm everybody, right? Go to your local gun shop and take an actual course, right, from a yes. certified instructor. Yeah. All right. We're going to be putting uh, a few and, things and together. I mean, like not that. like the, the uh, concealed carry course. I mean, there's actual shooting courses. Take a real course. Right. Yeah. Okay? Anybody that's taking a, an actual concealed carry course, they'll tell you there's not a whole lot of training there. It's a bunch of classroom stuff. You go out. And they see, can you shoot your gun in a general direction? Right. Okay, that's it. There's no, how do I reload on the move? There's no, how do I shoot from behind cover so I don't get shot? You know, there's none of that stuff. So that you need to take. Uh, I know there's an advanced shooters course at a couple of places out here in Oklahoma. I'm sure there are uh, where he's at and where you guys are as well. Yes, uh, uh, we in Tennessee. Take a man. real. <laughs> <laughs> we shooting over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got open carry, no permit, too. Like that, right? <laughs> um, I do want to read some of these questions, though, uh, that the that the um, listeners have commented for you guys. But real quick, before I do that, um, medical combat training, if there was one more thing, I just like to work in threes. Is there, if there was one more thing to start uh, to do immediately, for, like to start out, with, what would be? Food. Food. Elaborate. Grow your own garden. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Brand- I got a garden at the house right now, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I've, I've got a garden. I, I got chickens. Like, I, got, I get eggs, and I'm surprised my rooster hasn't crowed. We all heard him yet. But, you know, have your own food. That way you are not relying on the supermarkets. Why right. am I just not learning about these guys? I, I, would say, um, I, I would say on top of that that I would add a fourth thing. Yeah. Physical training. Yeah, physical training. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Carry your own gear. 
If you cannot carry your own gear, you are wrong, okay? If you cannot drag your buddy when your buddy goes down, you are wrong, okay? All right. Like... <laughs> See, I, I I can do that. Kidding. I can carry. Uh, I can carry. I can carry both these niggas over here. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but he said that the camera but we're not carrying running. them for you know two and three kilometers or whatever it is. You know, <laughs> <laughs> run a half mile without sucking wind because you're dying. Okay, okay? you're there wrong. You go. Like you, you gotta train, and I'm a firm believer of strong body, strong mind. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you're going to be mentally strong, you got to be physically strong because that creates the whole package. Otherwise, something's going to be off. All right. Gotcha. Damn, gotcha. Right. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Let me read these questions, man. All right. God, I'm so glad I found these dudes. All right. Shout what out you what do you want? Shirt. All right. First thing I do want to uh, ask was um, somebody asked, would they call themselves more like security for peaceful protests? Would that fit? No, I, I would say no, uh, because that means that they are relying on us to keep them safe, and they should be relying on themselves. Mm. Personal responsibility. Mm. That's the whole reason why there's the issue with the police department. Everyone is relying on the cops to keep them safe, and when the cops didn't keep them safe, now we have a problem, right? All right. Personal responsibility. You learn how to protect yourself. That's why we train, so we can protect ourselves and our families. Now, with that, with that being said, obviously, you know we are there as as well to kind of help protect some yeah. of those people that that haven't gotten that training and don't know how to protect themselves, or um, you know they're unable to as well. Uh, but that's that's definitely not the 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 first mission, um, but it's 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 a part of it. I would say. Somebody come in. I would improve it. Somebody come in and said, instead of the, the thin blue line, the thin Hawaiian line. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thick boog line is how we Yeah, there you go. That. That's right. There we go. The thin right. boog line. All right. The thick boog line. Um, somebody else asked if you guys had a mission, if Boogaloo Boys had a mission statement, if there was a mission statement that would encompass you guys. I think pretty much the Liberty don't don't uh you know tread on me that's our mission statement don't tread on me yeah. <laughs> all right all right it, it, it it's it's basically you know we just want to be left alone right like we want to have our freedom and not be infringed upon as long as we're not hurting other people right right and we want the same for everybody else for me being a libertarian like i look at it like so many things are now a law and which they should just be moral decisions you know like if you morally make that decision you got to live with that you know i feel like that i feel like that about abortion I you know i do i mean that's just a common one i'm like if you, you morally you have to live with the decision that you you did that you know i don't think there should be laws maybe you know maybe maybe a law against you know terms of how far along a person sh should go but other than that like completely banning or completely allowing that's that's a moral decision you know hmm. in my opinion right. yeah well, if, uh, on the abortion topic i think that gets into some deeper material uh you know you're talking about terms right and how long uh that that child can survive uh before an abortion is no longer tolerated. That's still government interference, if you ask me. Yeah, it is. It yes. is. All right. So, it all is. right, because I've already got into it. and murder. That's a whole separate rabbit trail right there. Exactly. Right. I've already got in trouble with women this week on Facebook, so I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> right, right. I'm going to sit this one to the side. Yeah. I I've got a few villains, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to jump on another one. I'm going to jump on child support. What about that? Child support is, is definitely oh. government infringement. It needs to be done away with. <laughs> people people would, <laughs> would definitely enforce protection a little bit more if they knew that child support wasn't coming. I feel that way. I do. <laughs> I do. I don't know. That's just me. You'd think you'd think twice yes. if that child support wasn't there. Like motherfucker. Yeah. But that's just me. That's a whole nother topic, whole nother thing. So I do wanna ask back to uh topic before we 
We get way too often these comments go yeah. go way left. We got to, we got to, <laughs> we got to hang up on them. Like, all right, guys, we we got to do some damage control. Well, good night, folks. We'll, we'll call you back. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, with the Boogaloo Boys and with uh, the current state of how everything is in the nation and everything like that, uh, do you guys? When it comes to sheer numbers, uh, not volunteers, like just members, and how you don't know who is and don't know who isn't that type of thing, and like like you said in the uh, protest last week, the guy could have been a, a agent, you know, that a, a plant, that type yeah. of thing. Do you guys worry more that now that there is national exposure and and and, and with so many protests going on, that there will be more people? Uh, masquerading and 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 will throw off the the real values and the real core like how how you said how antifa has become this thing now do you worry that more people will start to just call themselves the uh, boogaloo boys and 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 really throw off the whole image of, of what it really is oh yeah for sure i mean like i said that's that's how the you know the misconceptions about the the liberty movement got started is because jackass people were in there and like Oh well, you know, when once we get finished uh, getting rid of the politicians, we're gonna get rid of all the minorities too. And like, no, no guy, that's not how liberty works. Right. You know. Right. All right. So, so what do you what do you do to try and be proactive to prevent this? What do you do? Like, you can't just jump and be like, "Hey, we need a registry," because that kind of goes against everything. You know what I mean? How do you? What do you guys do? So, I mean, you know, at least for our group, we we have fairly. Um, uh, fairly strenuous vetting process and you know we kind of we kind of talked to the guy for you know qu quite a while before we even let him in the you know inner circle and it's for the most part unless you know they're really good at, at bsing uh you can kind of figure out if somebody's actually about liberty or not before you know you invite them into that inner circle mm, nice you know nice. uh and then obviously if, you know whenever you see it Oh no! Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. And then obviously, <laughs> whenever you see it, right, uh, you just immediately squash that. Like, okay, guy, you are not part of us. Like, you get get the fuck away from me. Like, don't talk to me. You are just the absolute scum of the earth. Right. Wow. All right. Just, yeah, just burn them. Right. Just burn them. <laughs> All right, Alex, go ahead. Oh, I was making a comment i thought he was finished i said uh, it's kind of like joining the illuminati you got to be there a while before you get to the inner circle yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, I, I get that but, uh, i definitely need to do pr for right. y'all <laughs> <laughs> i definitely need to do pr so. we, we make videos we do photography we yeah come out we'll definitely you, do some pr because like, we want we don't want people to associate you guys like the illuminati either so I'm trying to start <laughs> yeah. a civil war <laughs> yeah <laughs> They're the Illuminati trying to start a civil war. That's what I took from the Who Dat podcast. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> so then we go like, whoa! How much yeah. did you watch? Right, <laughs> right. You watched two minutes right. in two separate segments, <laughs> in two separate times. Right. What the fuck? So okay, but, guys. Um, let me see where we're at on time here. Oh, we got a few more minutes. Cool. All right, wait, Devin. Give us something, man. You just been sitting there. I'm just learning. You're just learning. Been kind of quiet. Uh, yeah, I'm just learning. Bro. Come, come closer to the mic. No, I'm just, I'm just learning. What do you, what do you think about what you've heard? Um, it's definitely not what everybody makes it to seem. Yeah. Um, grew up, being from Lansing, when Lansing started, you know, uh, having their protests and stuff like that, and seeing the guys that went up to the Capitol with their guns and stuff like that, and from just some of the things that I've heard about you know what you guys stand for what what that was entitled from from what you guys have made it seem and what it is it's a totally two different mindset type of effect that i've you know been sitting here listening because you know i i don't i i, I kind of like learn i like sitting and learning and listening to people i don't really talk that much especially when there's not much i know about it I'm not going to try to sit in and chime in and try to say anything because I, I don't know. It's kind of why I've been quiet because I, I didn't. Before, I, when I walked in here, Paco even looked at me and asked me if I knew anything about you guys. I had no clue. So, like, that's why I'm quiet because I, I have no idea. And I'm not going to chime in and 
say anything because well, I, I will tell you something my mother told me, man. My my mom told me uh, closed mouth don't get fed. So you want information, you got to open that mouth and ask. Yes, yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I'll give you that. <laughs> so, so I guess what. what <laughs> what, what were you seeing in Lansing that that's kind of been opposite of what we're saying? Because I'm I'm not familiar with that one. So in Lansing, uh, they were protesting the quarantines and, and the mandated stay at home orders. So they were protesting at the courthouses, and uh, some guys came down with the the um, the guns, and some had Hawaiian shirts, mm-hmm. and some had body armor and everything like that. Uh, they didn't really have anybody speaking though, but there there were photos. Yeah, of, it was uh, like a like they. They occupied. Yeah, they occupied yeah. the. Um, w- w- which building was it, Devin? Uh, that was the state capitol. Yeah, they yeah, ap- occupied see. the state capitol building. Now, a, a big difference is where we are. We're in Tennessee, and where we were, our quarantine laws and things that happened were extremely different. Like up there, they weren't even allowed to buy seeds. Like they had blocked off sections of the actual stores. Where if it wasn't a non non essential item, you couldn't get it, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I, I, yeah I, I know what you're talking about now. As soon as you said that, yeah. So it's a, it was a much different situation than what we experienced down here. I imagine if we experienced what they experienced up there down here, that we would have had more of a push from the community also. Sure. So, like, I think. What, they could just get food items? Devin, tell us, you were... Uh, yeah, so the things that the governor had, like, signed off for them for their stay-at-home order was for... They could only go to grocery stores and get essential items. Any non-essential items, such as, like, shovels, anything that, that had to do with anything outside, um, you know... She kind of, like, took that away because nobody was really kind of, like, listening to her, thinking, like, it, you know, thinking it was kind of like a hoax... Um, even though a majority of, you know, Michigan's numbers came from Wayne County down in Detroit, you know, we still had people that were traveling from Lansing to Detroit and stuff like that for work. Um, but they had like, she had like taken it all away. They were all on curfew. Yeah. Yeah. They were all like set to, at certain times you go to the grocery store. Like she made it to where they were like pretty much on house arrest. Yeah. So what? Right. How do y'all feel about that? Like from hearing that and having y'all standpoint as libertarians and, and Andrew, you first. So, I, I mean that's that's literally the exact thing that that, that the Boogaloo boys are trying to prevent. You know, getting the government to deem what is essential and what's not. Mm-hmm. You know, like I think any of the COVID protests. That's what it was about, was the government deeming what's essential and what's not, right? Mm -hmm. So all the businesses that got shut down, you know, um, like a lot of the gyms in in my area, they shut down because it was non-essential. Well, I bet that gym owner thought that his business was pretty damn essential to feed his family. Yes. You know, and the government is not allowing him to do that. And then... The, you know, the opposite side of that is you get the, the um, like, the COVID payouts, and people were not coming back to work because they were getting more money from the government than they were working. And so now they are dependent on the government for their livelihood. And that is just absolutely, it's appalling. Right. You create a welfare society, then uh, it makes them uh, harder for, to fight against you. You don't bite the exactly. that feeds you. Yeah, I feel like it was all a ploy. Yeah. Yeah, that's I that's that I think that's one of the biggest reasons why Democrats have such a heavy following, right? Is because of the social programs and stuff that they push so hard. Uh, Alex, do you want to jump in on this? Because I have one more question. I don't want to keep y'all too long. But I'm just very curious. Oh, oh, go right ahead, man. I'm I'm listening. All right. So y'all mentioned. Uh, I, mm-hmm. Sorry. I said I'm I'm agreeing with Andrew on that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, what we have somebody that keeps asking, what are the alternatives? You have to explain yourself a little bit more. Alternatives to what? Yeah. But in, all right. So when you guys were speaking about uh, corruption in the government, um, a lot of people don't know that Hillary Clinton is on trial right now. Do you guys know about that? And what and what do you guys think about what that says as far as corruption in the government goes? Butterfly. That's what I say. <laughs> Right. 
I mean, it, it, it just, it shows how, like, how asinine the, you know, the election system it is in this country and that somebody that is being, you know, accused of trafficking children for pedophiles mm-hmm. is in a position of power in this country. It's like, it just shows person. how corrupt this government is at every level. Because, you know, if it's that high up, you know that it's down lower. Right, right, mm-hmm. and it's it, it just it blows my mind that that she was running for president of United of the United States four years ago. Yes, like yes. The, the the fact that people wanted her to be the president of the United States is just it it shows you know that that Stockholm syndrome of people of. You know, God, we we, we got to have the, the the politicians in the government, and oh, she's been in there for so long, she's got to know what the fuck she's doing. Like, I I've hated Hillary Clinton since Benghazi. Like, that's that's right. just you know, well, probably before yeah. that too, that's when I was a crazy. hardcore Republican. But whatever. <laughs> so, what what is the correlation with with the 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 one percent and this these children and sex trafficking? Like, bro, don't get me. Uh, I know, but like. I see this. I always see it, and I'm like, you know, you know, you always think at at our ages, oh, I, I get rich and famous, and I'm gonna have me a bad one, and all this stuff. And they're like, I get rich and famous, I want some children. Like, what in the world is, like, why? You know, like, why is this a thing? Like, uh, our, our guest, you have the right to go first. Yes, I don't want to <laughs> overtalk you, so please, <laughs> y'all go first. I, I think it's about power. Plain and simple. Yeah, I feel like if you've ever had a bunch of kids, having power over kids is overrated. <laughs> <laughs> That's overrated. You, you got three. three? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> see, like, I right, man, somebody come take these kids. FTK. <laughs> hey, where, where's your grandma at? Right. Oh, man, uh, where is Granny? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Not just jump off on the crazy tip there. But Alex, you got anything you want to well, add? Think- I think he's right when he said it's it's about power. Uh, you, you look at the people who have ended up in these places of authority. These are not random people. It did not end up that way because, you know, so-and-so got voted in and then this random person over here got voted in. No, these people have made it so that their friends get elected. Mm-hmm. It's a circle. Mm-hmm. They, they have not, you know, just randomly picked and chosen people and they ended up being pedophiles. No. These people who are already in power, the people who have the ability to direct the the way our country is going, to direct the way our government is headed, uh, they have brought in these people and they have set the stage for them to become politicians and become people of authority and in power right beside them. Mm -hmm. Yes. They have built this. This is not a, you know, accidental thing. It is a construction. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's, 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 I agree. it's too much going on for this to be by happenstance and coincidence. Right, right. Yes, yep. this is some satanic <laughs> shit right here. Yeah. That we are witnessing whatever it may be. Yes, I'm. I'm telling you. I'm. Let me. I'll let you know. Like we ain't even got to guess. It's some satanic ass ritual ass shit. Like we we have to start admitting the things that we know. They don't make a movie like like Skull and Bones where they have where they showing you this shit over and over again for no reason. Right, like right, we right. know. That there are like hidden societies, we know that. Right. Like, where the fuck you think all these kids are going? Like, right. How do you, how do you have a whole international network of sex rings for what purpose? Y'all just partying that much? Fuck out of here. Right. No, right. like this, they're doing shit. Like, all the stuff that we've been seeing that we just think is like, oh, that's conspiracy theory. Oh, right. shit. No, Edward Snowden knocked the lid off, then WikiLeaks came right behind it, and if you just track the trajectory of the shit. That's right. a wicked bitch right Follow there. The Follow the Follow money. The money. That's the truth. That is the truth. Yo, yeah, wait, very listen. much so. The fact she was running for president and and it was like you were a criminal or you were against the progress of humanity if you didn't want to see a female president. Right. Is yep. incredible exactly. to me. And when three fast forward three years later, this bitch is I got a sex ring. Right. Right. Like what the yeah, there's- Chris Webby, uh, I, I listen to Chris Webby from time to time. He's got a, you know, raw thoughts. 
And in Raw Thoughts, he made the greatest statement about Hillary Clinton uh, that I think I've heard anyone say. He said, you know, I'm down to have a woman president, just not you. Yeah. Boom. Right, <laughs> jo- right. Joe Jorgensen. <laughs> there you go. Hey. That was perfect that timing. That's got my vote. <laughs> Man, perfect timing. He came right in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Name drop. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> well, guys, I uh, I surely appreciate you coming on and uh, and speaking with us. If you guys will hang around after we're uh, after we're done here in just about two two minutes or so, two or three minutes, or do you got something you need to? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, I'm good. yeah. If you guys will hang around and uh, just just mute your mics for a minute if you need to, and um, we're gonna wrap up. But thank you for coming on, and we surely appreciate that. And and hopefully people can get a better understanding of Boogaloo Boys, okay? Yeah, man. Thanks for having us, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, All right. Appreciate you the same. Same. <laughs> Learned a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, Brandon, is there anything you want to follow up with? Um, There's a lot that's been going on in the, uh, in the country this week. Um, lynchings of four different black people in different places around the, around the uh, country. Uh, more police shootings and I just need y'all to understand the, the the magnanimity of the situation I don't I don't think that we are really connecting that's where we're playing checkers once again right. and we're in that checker mind, mindset you need to really understand uh, where we are we were just talking about a former presidential candidate that is on trial for sex rings we we are dealing with a society to where every 30 seconds a child of color is snatched. We're dealing with a place to where racial stress is the is the biggest type of stress that will kill you. You know what I mean? Right. And we're number one in all the proponents that that leads to. Like we are dealing with things from a diff- from all different sides. So just going on some protesting and and I went to a protest. I went to I've been to four protests and that's cool. But you need to start thinking about about changes that you can make individually in your life because you we are in a in a in a place to where change that comes through voting is you're talking about a four to eight year return on investment type thing. Right. You know what I mean? And be honest, we had the first quote unquote the first black president of the United States of America when Trayvon and Michael Brown and all and Sandra Bland, he was in office when all these killings happened and no legislation got passed. So this whole voting our way out of this mess is not gonna work because you see the options that they give us are just further proponents of the problem. Like if we had all voted for Hillary instead of Trump, then that means we, we would have a pedophile as president so you either got somebody that's gonna run run sex rings and i can say this because she's on trial right now so it's not like i'm like slandering so she's either gonna do sex rings or you got somebody that's gonna grab by the pussy voting your way out of this is not going to change your day to day right a black person is killed every 25 hours by a police officer and it might have went down since then i ain't looked that up since a couple months ago right these last few weeks have been crazy you need to start changing your immediate surrounding. What can you control? What can you do that will make your direct life? And can I jump in for just a second? Yeah. And instead of just trying to change the world, trying to change everything in one giant swoop, Mm-mm. do it on a local level. Yes. Go to smaller levels. Direct change. Yes. Right then. That's what we're going to do. We're going to aim for a, a local murray county level where we are we're not aiming to change the world and maybe mm-hmm. somebody will pick up our plan and be like okay look at these statistics these this works let's use this yes you know but we're not don't and don't try to go out and be like i i need to change the whole world on this because if you haven't noticed this system is is way far beyond you the structure that is in existence is is based on an ideology of, of beliefs and faith that of people that don't give a fuck. They just want to see it continue. They're just Profit. following. Yes, Profit. they're just following the same old, same old schemes that have always worked. So why would they change? 
But it's time for us to see those schemes, recognize them and call them out and then decide what in your life are you going to do to protect yourself, whether it be physically, whether it be uh, health wise, whether it be emotionally, whether it be whatever, like financial independence, whatever it is. We are in a situation to where you have to make choices now. You have to decide now. You cannot be on the sidelines. And you, shout out to y'all keyboard warriors, whatever. Y'all keep right. doing your shit. Oh, awareness warriors. Yes, y'all keep <laughs> doing y'all shit. But for those that are really seeing this, this is a time to decide if the things in your life that you are just dealing with, if you can actually do something about them. Right. And if you can, you need to decide to do something about them. Like that's the that's the only way that that you're gonna. Where is her trial? Like where do I find that? Google, bro. Google. Yeah, you just Google. Google's that. your friend, bro. Yeah. But you need to make a decision to try and change just your immediate surrounding. And if we have ten people that are changing their immediate surroundings, then that's a a, a hundred people that will be affected. You know what I mean? Right. So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. Sure. But in the meantime. Uh, Stay blessed. Don't stress. Life's just a test. Uh, Devin, you got anything before we sign out? No. No, nothing? Okay, then. Well, like always, who that? Who that?